So in, in my plan, the first one is we ask a prospect to text a keyword to a phone number. A phone number is our number. It's not shared with other people. It's, you know, your number, my number, whatever it is, you've got your own number. They text the keyword to that phone number to get a promised resource or experience. And I'll explain those in more depth if we want. But I, you know, like maybe it's a PDF report or something like that. Or maybe it's, you know, when I say experience, that's actually like a demonstration of something. So whatever it is, maybe it's information on a video. It could be a number of different things, but it doesn't matter. I ask them to text a keyword to a phone number in order to get that. And I'll give people a chance to try that out if you want at the end of this. Number two, I'm going to gather co contact information from an automated conversation format. And this does a couple things for us. One is it allows us to know multiple ways to communicate and we can get personal because we have a name now, not just a phone number. And then two, it opens up the idea in the mind of the prospect that we can text to communicate. That's important because everybody's heard the statistics. I'm not going to bother with them. But everybody knows that if you get a text message, you're much more likely to read it or see it than you are if you just get an email. Mostly because there's that promotions tab that you click on archive hall and boom, you didn't even see the headlines or who it was from or anything. So, you know, email is a very tough game. It's a good game, but it's a tough game. Then at the end of that automated conversation, and we'll, again, I'll let you try it out so you can see how it works. But at the end of that automated conversation, there is an open-ended question. And I learned about open-ended questions in elementary school because there was this little video project and we were, you know, interviewing teachers and I was asked the teacher, do you like working here? And that's a closed ended question because it's either a yes or a no, right? And it probably puts them on the spot. And the teacher that was supervising and said, yeah, don't ask that kind of question because maybe they don't like working here. They don't want to admit it on tape because they'll get fired. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> we'll ask open ended questions, you know? So what do you like most about working here? Okay, they can answer that one honestly, it's open ended. But that's an open-ended question. We want to ask that at the end of our gathering the name and email address from our automated conversation so that if they are interested in continuing, continuing that conversation, they can. With like a system like ours, that rolls over then into a live chat. And so I'll get notified on my phone or on my desktop, and I can then carry on a conversation with that prospect. And guess what? Sales happen in conversation. Now, sometimes we simulate that conversation through maybe a follow-up sequence, right? the drip email campaign or something like that, but sales happen in conversation. And so what's great about this situation is if they ask and answer that open-ended question, immediately that tells me that somebody's interested and I can either have a salesperson. I usually use a salesperson because I'm building a team versus me doing everything. I'll notify my salesperson. They get notified of that message and then they can carry on the conversation. The other thing that we do at the end of that automated conversation, and this is part four, is we give them an opportunity to start an assessment. An assessment is a three to four multiple choice um, question survey, basically, that's all mobile focused because they're getting it in the text, so they're gonna do, see it on their phone. And what we do is we have them just answer a few questions. The first question is intended to categorize. So we wanna say, okay, What's their problem? You probably solve three or four main problems in your business. That's how most things go. If you're doing more than that, you probably need to scale back because you're not going to have success. So we have three or four main problems that we solve. The first question is to help us to know which of the problems they have so that we can then focus the rest of our follow-up and our sales process on helping them get what they want. The next three or four are designed to open their mind. So we ask questions, not so much because we need to have the answer, but so that we can introduce a concept into their mind. 